for joining me today. Today I'd like to address some of the discussions that came up from my first video and from some of the subsequent videos and discussions that we've had on this channel so far. First of all, please let me thank you for all of the phenomenal feedback that I've received. All of the feedback, all of the discussion, all of the comments have been really supportive but also really thought-provoking and interesting and I appreciate everybody taking the time to engage in these conversations. I was taken aback by some of the response that we received because I thought that I would have to drag people into conversation but the people who instantly engaged were all very ambitious driven, highly accomplished men. They all had interesting and diverse backgrounds and they came from different sectors. I don't know why I didn't see that coming, but in any event, I appreciate all of the discussion and I really appreciate everybody engaging in the way that they have. As you know, commercial aviation is so unsettled right now and there are a lot of people who would like to change everything about commercial aviation in Canada, a lot of which is manifesting in really interesting ways in high achievers. And of course, the situation continues to unfold daily with different decisions that governments and or regulators and or commercial carriers or various other operators are choosing to deal with this unfolding situation. There's so much uncertainty right now. The business of law, however, has never been busier. And a lot of the people that I'm working with are starting to hit the wall. And of course, the HR piece is a whole different animal of its own because human resources is about humans and humans are tricky. There's a very long backstory to this project, and in some ways, getting into that backstory is about getting into my backstory. And that's not a place we'll go today because we'll be here all day. But some of what I was working on was putting together some workshops and courses with legal people and aviation people who used to be regulators. And I was also doing quite a lot of speaking and facilitating workshops for other people, uh, mostly for women and for legal support staff. And what I was finding in each of these separate sort of worlds, whether that be in law or in aviation or when dealing with regulatory matters for both law and aviation, I was having the same conversations with people and it, it ranged from people who were really high up on a national or international level to people who worked in the office next door and we were often talking about the same things and we were often dealing with problems that had the same solution that wasn't really rocket science. It was actually just a solution that took some guts. Oftentimes these people couldn't speak directly to each other because of some limitation or potential conflict. So what I want to do here is create a space where we can have these discussions and people can talk to each other, even if that means they're just talking to me or through me in a video or a podcast. Let me just give you an example. When I was working on historical sexual assault cases from residential schools, I was told once by a chief that the people I was working with would tell me their stories and would trust me with their stories because he knew, they knew, I was going to leave. And they didn't talk to each other about it, but they could talk to me. 
and the elders that I worked with, some of whom I'm still very close with today, told me that they would trust me with their stories because I was their voice. I was not their voice. They were their voice. I was the vessel they could use to carry their stories from one world to another. And that's the environment that I'd like to create with this project and this YouTube channel and the podcast, is to create a bridge. Creating this environment is not always easy. Number one, you need people who are brave enough to talk to you. Number two, you want to create a safe space for people to talk about sensitive issues. Then there's the video part. That ain't easy. You can spend hours just trying to figure out the light. That was a joke. You know how people say, if you're speaking to everyone, you're reaching no one? Well, I'm not entirely sure that's true, but I'd like to find out. And in the meantime, while I get clear on my own message, I'd like to balance these conversations between women and men, aviation people, legal people, lawyers, support staff, regulators, operators, management, everybody else. I'd love to engage in a really big way, but I know that some people are just going to engage by watching or listening and people will come and people will go, but that's okay. Some of the things that we're going to talk about will spark competition and debate and fear. And some people are only going to engage by watching or listening because they're too afraid to talk about it. And that's fine. And I know that because two thirds of my coaching clients are men. I'm just gonna let that land. What I have discovered is that all people forget that they have agency all of the time. We've got some really interesting conversations coming up, including layoffs in federally regulated uh, industries, workplace safety. What does the most recent case law say about, say, refusal to work in a pandemic? Recent case law surrounding obligations under contracts in a pandemic. We're going to talk about consumer protection from creditors. We're going to talk about creditor protection because the pandemic has changed everything. We're going to talk about apprenticeship programs and employers' obligations. And what I'd like to know from you is if you could really dig in without limitation to one of these conversations, what is it that you want to know? What do you want to learn and teach? What is going to be valuable to you? What's your currency, personally or professionally? Sometimes all we're going to talk about is dealing with your shit, quite frankly, because sometimes that's the problem. If you didn't have to clear everything, through with your boss or the partners or your manager or your media team. What are interesting and lightning conversations that you want to have out loud? These are the kind of conversations I have all day long in my job every day, but in private. And they're across sectors, they're across position, across class, across gender. The problem is that people are having these conversations with me, not with each other. I was talking about this project with a colleague and I'd like to paraphrase something that he said to me, which I thought was really important and a really a salient point. His comment was that our businesses are really reliant on trust of others and trust of people within our business. And sometimes that can lead to a lot of really good people who might be full of their own self-interests or needs, ending up sort of putting on fronts so they can make it appear as if they're doing the right thing. But sometimes they're not even certain what the right thing is. 
I can't say that we know what the right thing is either, but I just want to talk about it. And I'd like to talk about it so that the people who can't talk about it with each other can at least potentially hear each other's points of view. Thank you again for joining me and for participating in these discussions. Some of them are quite interesting and active and I'll see you next week. Right, and also I wanted to point out that all my colleagues are really smart. I don't want any of those emails that say, I'm a really smart guy too. How come you never listen to me? I do listen to you. I do. <laughs>